Hey folks, how are you all doing? It's Will here back for another Fight Card Prediction. We're going to be breaking down UFC Fight Night Berlin, or UFC Fight Night 69 as some may know it, as um, the UFC strawweight title will be on the line as the champion Joanna Ian Jacek um, faces off against the challenger Jessica Panay, coming off a, a fantastic event at UFC 188 where we saw a new champion uh, in Fabrizio Verdum who submitted Cain Velasquez in the third round of a truly great, it was a really good heavyweight fight, a little bit sloppy but really good to watch and um, Fabrizio Verdum uh, I thought had a perfect game plan and I've been saying for weeks I think he was going to beat Cain Velasquez and he came out on top. Um, I say, if you want to come and follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at WillMartin7MMA. Come play Counter Move with me on CounterMove.com and try and win my money. Um, UFC Berlin here. A lot of kind of newcomers, kind of your lower tier fighters on this card. I like these kind of European cards. I think it's what the UFC needs to try and get more talent in the UFC. And there is talent in this card, without a doubt, uh, from the European circuit and the kind of world circuit as well there. So we're going to get straight into it and we're going to be going down to the bantamweight division as we've got Taylor Lapalus facing off against Ulka uh, Sasaki. Now Taylor Lapalus, uh, I think he's 9-1 and one out of France and uh, he's 1-0 and in the UFC with I think six of his wins coming by way of submission. Um, he beat Rocky Lee in Poland back in April. Um, looked fairly decent in the fight as well. He showed a lot of improvements on his feet. In his previous fights before that, he was very hesitant, uh, hesitant on his feet and didn't really engage too much. Um, would it was fairly decent in the clinch and uh, would take you to the ground where he would use his um, really good submission skills. Um, but in the UFC debut against Rocky Lee, he showed a lot of um, really nice combinations. He had a beautiful lead um, low kick, which he, lose, he used in Rocky Lee, who kind of, his game plan was to try and take Lapalus to the ground. Showed some fairly decent um, takedown and defense as well. Um, but he's got a big step up in competition here against um, Sasaki, who is also coming off a loss here. He lost to Leandro Issa um, in Brazil. He got um, put out via a neck crank. Um, before that, he had a, a really nice submission, rear naked choke victory over... Roland Delorme, guy who comes out very aggressive, he'll run towards you to start the fight. Um, in that fight against Delorme, he just kind of swarmed him, hit him with a really big kick and um, took him down and got his back very, very easily and um, was just a really nice debut from the kid. I'm still quite high in the kid. I think he's got about 18 wins, a couple of losses, a couple of draws on there. Um, but as I say, I was very impressed with Lapalus in Poland. I thought um, he's never really fought in a cage before professionally and um, his cage awareness I thought was really, really good when backed against the cage. Uh, both guys very, very good down the ground, but I think I'm going to edge towards Sasaki here. I think he's got more chance of the finish as well. I, I do think he can finish, but I'm going to go via decision victory for uh, Ulka Sasaki. Next up in the lightweight division, we have Piotr Holman against Magomed Mustafaev. Mustafaev's 11-1 fights at American Top Team as well as the Beirut Fight Club. Um, really well, good, well-rounded fighter. He's coming off a win over Khabib Nurmagomedov's brother, uh, Abu Abukar. Um, that fight got stopped. I think he hit a spinning elbow and I think it opened a really big cut which the doctor stopped. It was a pretty devastating cut if I remember right. Um, just a really good, well-rounded fighter coming out of that in the Dagestani kind of area um, in Russia or Beirut in Russia, where, wherever it is he's from. Um, just a really solid fighter to be adding to this lightweight division. And he's against Piotr Holman here, who's coming off a loss against Gleason Tiba. I think he popped for something in that fight as well and lost his fight night bonus. Before that, he had, um, I think he had a win over Eves Edwards via submission. Lost before that to Alaya Quinta. And uh, his debut, he actually went down to Brazil and submitted for um, Francisco Trinaldo, which was a really good, really good win down there. Uh, just a, a good fighter overall. Likes to take, I think he's got seven wins by submission, seven by KO. I don't even think he's ever kind of won a decision either. So if it goes to decision, he might lose um, the fight pretty much. But I like him. Uh, to kind of show his dominance in this fight and try and take it to the ground where I think he he has a little bit of an edge over uh, Mustafaev who I've seen that he seems to get taken down a little bit too easily sometimes. Um, but I really like the underdog in this fight and I'm actually going to go with him. I think if you're playing counter move as well, this guy's 4200. He's a really good 
um, guy for putting your team if you're looking for a finish possibly. I'm going to go Mustafaev by, um, I'm going to go a third round submission for this guy. I think I've just got a feeling for him. Um, next up we have in the middleweight division we have Scott Askham against Antonio De Santos. De Santos lost to, um, let me see who it was, Daniel Sarafain in his UFC debut. I think he broke his finger, he wanted to get it put back in and uh, the referee just he didn't want that. He stopped the fight altogether. And he's against Scott Askham here who's also coming off a loss to Magnus Sedenblad back in January on the, I think it was the Fox card if, I, if, if I'm right. Uh, a very big middleweight is Scott Askham. Likes to throw the high kick. I think he hit Sedenblad with a few nice high kicks in that, in that one. But um, Sedenblad got the, I think it was a split decision. It was a very close fight. Before he quit the UFC, he beat um, a prospect in Mac, uh, Nunez, uh, Max Nunez. I think Askham just being the bigger guy in this fight, and he is a, a thoroughly big guy and he's got a longer reach. I think he's going to beat Dos Santos, who, who just plows forward. Just to try and take it to the ground, um, but I think Askham's got more than enough to kind of keep it in the feet. And if it goes to the ground, I think he can handle Dos Santos down there as well. So I'm going to go Scott Askham by a knockout in the third round. Next up, we've got Nicholas Backstrom against Noad Lahat. A Backstrom coming off a devastating loss back in Sweden um, to end last year uh, against Mike Wil uh, Wilkinson. He was being far too aggressive. I think a little bit cocky as well. Came forward on Wilkinson and he got hit with a huge right hand. And he got followed up with a couple of shots in the bottom. And that was it for Nicholas Backstrom. Um, I am really high in this kid. I still think he will do big things in the UFC featherweight division. I think that loss will be a good thing for him, inevitably. Um, and he's against Noad Lahat here, who's um, coming off a win over Steven Seiler last time out. Before that, he, did, he um, was on the end of a very devastating knockout as well. When he lost to Godfrey de Pepe, who's in a bit of a run at the minute. I think Lahat's been out a little bit. I think he had to go and serve in Israel, if I remember right. And I just think that he's going to look for the takedown here on Backstrom. I think Backstrom's going to catch him with a knee. I think he's he's going to come in for a sloppy takedown. I think Backstrom's going to make him pay, pay for it. I like Backstrom in this one. I actually think he's going to submit him. So I'm going to go a second round submission for Nicholas Backstrom. Next up, we have Alan O'Meara against um, a, a fighter who was added to the UFC this morning, Arnold Allen. Uh, uh, Alan O'Meara. He fights out Iraq, if I believe. He's won a no. He's lost his only fight in the UFC. He lost to Jimmy Ellis via split decision in Abu Dhabi last year, which is a little bit of a long time for him to be out, if I'm being honest. And uh, a very good fighter is Omea. He's pretty well rounded everywhere, but he's he comes um, alive when you go to the ground with him. He transitions very well. He's very stifling when he gets you down there. Looks for submissions. I think nine of his eighteen wins are by. A submission so it's something to keep an eye on down there but um, he's against Arnold Allen here who's been an English a British prospect we, sh we should say probably an English prospect um, for a long time 9-1 and one record I, I think he's got 4 wins via TKO, 2 by submission, 3 by decision just a really fun fighter to watch, watched him in Cage Warriors a few times and he was um, all action, yeah, there was one fight where a guy was holding on to his leg and he was just beating the shit out of him with hammer punches and dragged him across the other side of the the cage and then just beat him up with ground and pound and got the stoppage victory. I'm a big, big fan of Arnold Allen here, but he's coming in five days notice and that's a lot for a fighter. Um, if this was on a, a longer basis, I would pick Arnold Allen in this one, but I just can't do it. I'm going to go Al Nomea by submission late in the second round here. Next up, we've got a very interesting matchup against Mir uh, Pitten Mirbak Tysimov against Alan Patrick. Both guys who love to stand, and uh, this could be really, really fun. Um, Tai Sumov is coming off a victory over Anthony Christodoulou, who is who was he was fucking terrible. And I was actually I thought he was going to be put in the Glasgow card, and he's been put in the August card in Nashville. Thank God, because he was terrible in that fight. It showed absolutely nothing. He looked like an amateur in there, and Tai Sumov just lit him up. I think his only loss in the, the UFC was down in Brazil, if I remember right. Let me have a little look. Uh, he lost to Michel Pizarres down there. He beat Marcin Bandel after that. Then there was a win over Christodoulou. And he won his UFC debut against Tai Hume Bang. Alan Patrick, he had a beautiful win over um, a very good fighter in John McDessie last time out. But I think he suffered a really bad jaw injury. I don't know if you remember seeing that um, flying around social media. It was a really bad jaw injury where it like, 
it was horrific. wasn't nice at all. And he's 12 and 0, and he's coming off a win over uh, John McDessie, a really good one at that. Uh, I just like Tyson moving this fight. I think he's going to catch him. I think he has more if it goes to the ground as well. But this should be a fun fight while it lasts. I'm just going to edge it with Tai Sumov. I think he could catch Patrick Kelly. So I'm going to go a first round TKO win for me about Tai Sumov. Uh, moving on to the featherweight division, we have Mr. Finland, Makwan Amirkani against Marcio Fulin. Marcio Fulin was on the Ultimate Fighter um, Latino America and really wasn't that good in the show. Came out of the UFC and had a really smelly fight at UFC 184 against Alexander Torres. It was a, a fight I don't really want to get into. It was horrible watching over again. But he got enough done in that fight to get the decision victory. We are Makwan Imrakani, who in his UFC debut in January, um, he came out, the guy's such a character, he flew out against Andy Ogle, hit him with a huge fly in the followed up with some punches against the fit when Ogle was against the fence and got himself a lovely, lovely bonus. Um, but this guy's dangerous everywhere. He's um, very extravagant in the feet. He will throw um, a lot of spinning kicks as well. Uh, spinning kicks, spinning back fists. He's um, not too technical. Maybe that's something he could improve on a little bit. He's very dangerous when it goes to ground. He's got a victory over a, a prospect I am very high on. A lot of people here in Europe are very high on. And uh, Tom Dickenwa. Um I like Amir Kani in this fight. I don't see it getting out of the first round. So I'm going to go Amir Kani via Tikio in the first. Saying that, Mar Marcio Fulin is a very tough guy from Mexico. I can I can just see a stoppage in this fight. And he's very cheap on counter move as well. 4,400. That is a, a, a fighter you have to have in your team, I believe. Moving on to the main card. We have Nick Hine against Lucas uh, Sajewski. Sajewski is a newcomer at the UFC. 13-0 record. A very good fighter becoming into the UFC into this lightweight division. Yeah, he holds a win over Marcin Held. Very good everywhere. Um, he stopped Held from getting those vicious leg locks, which Held is known for. But overall, he's pretty good everywhere. Um, we are Nick Hine is he's pretty laboured on his feet. He throws everything into his shots. He is very good at taking you down with his judos, uh, with his judo skills. It's a really tough fight to pick between these two because Hein in Germany seems a different beast like he did against Drew Dober. They had a great fight down there. He faced James Vick in his last fight and um, Vick's just overall length, I think, just hurt Hein overall. I think he lost a unanimous decision victory there. I'm going to go with the newcomer on this one. I don't think too many people will be picking him. I am going to pick him. I'm going to start going with a lot more underdogs. I'm going with too many fighters at the minute, I've realised. I'm in a few tournaments where I'm just picking, chopping and changing, or just because he's got experience. So I'm going to go with Lucas Sajewski, and I'm going to stick with it this time, and I think he'll win by decision. Next up, we have Peter Sabota against Steve Kennedy. Steve Kennedy is coming in here in like a week's notice as well. Uh, didn't see too much of him. Pretty decent wrestler. Not a bad boxer. Pretty good grappler, though. Um, and a lot of his wins come by submission. Only watched the one fight, I think it was against Rodriguez, and there was another one, in fact, against Young that I watched where he won. Um, but he is coming in here on short notice against Peter Sabota, who last time out against Peter Pollock, I thought he looked fantastic in that fight, all, being honest. Um, took Pollock down, beat him up down there. He probably got a finish as well. But it's kind of weird that it's another year later and he's fighting in the Berlin card. Uh, but I do like him to win this fight. I think he can stop Steve Kennedy, and I think he will. I'm going to go a third round TQ victory for Peter Sabota. Coming in event, we have Dennis Seaver against Tatsuya Kawajiri, two veterans of the MMA here. Um, Dennis Seaver, a striker predominantly out of um, Germany, coming off his loss against Conor McGregor, where he got beat up pretty bad in that fight. Let's be honest, he was overmatched and he was outmatched in that fight and uh, got a couple of nice takedowns on uh, the notorious one but uh, just overall was beat up before that he beat Charles Rosa in a pretty decent fight in Sweden the end of last year coming off that um, I think he got banned for a year because he popped for something where Tatsuya Kawajiri beat Sean Soriano with a, a nice submission in round two and he lost last time out to Clay Guida uh, I want to go with Kawajiri in this fight, but he doesn't travel very well. And 
I just kind of do it in Germany, go against Dennis Seaver. I think he'll get back to winning ways here. I don't think it'll be an overly great fight. I don't see a finish in this fight. But I like Dennis Seaver to do enough to get a probably a unanimous decision victory. So I'm going to go Dennis Seaver. And in the main event of the night, we have Joanna Jacek against Jessica Penny. Penny, who is the former Invicta uh, Atomweight champion here, is coming in uh, into the, a title fight here off a, a nice win over Randa Marcos, who's a really good fighter in that division. She is um, very well-versed when it goes to the ground. This is this is her only chance to win, in my, in my opinion, because she will offer nothing on her feet. She's not very powerful. She's not awfully technical. She leaves her head in the air. Um, she gets hit to the body quite easily as well, which I think Ian Jatrek is actually going to hurt her with and going low. The one thing I think she's going to try and do is maybe get Ian Jacek up against the cage and maybe pull guard and try and get her down there because she will have a great chance if the fight goes there. Eh, she will have a phenomenal chance. But we've seen in Ian Jacek's last fight against Carla Esparza, she stuffed every takedown. And every time that Esparza tried that takedown, she hit her with a punch, hit her with an elbow. And you can see in Esparza's face, she's like, oh, fuck, what am I going to do here? And... Um, basically just got beat up the one thing that Yin Jacek has got and I love watching her fight she is so accurate with her strikes she doesn't waste many punches and uh, she angles very well as, as well too she's overall just a good boxer a good Muay Thai practitioner, uh, practitioner hits you with some nice low kicks I just think she's going to open up on Jessica Penny here and I don't see this going Maybe it might hit the third round, but I don't see it going any further than the third round here. And I like Joanna Champion to um, TKO Jessica Penny in this fight. I just don't think Penny is on the level. I don't think there's too many people in this division that can give Yin Jacek a lot of trouble. So I'm going to go Joanna Champion via TKO in the third round. So that is my pick for UFC Berlin. I will be back with... Later in the week with my picks for UFC, I think it's a finale, the Ultimate Fighter Brazil finale from Hollywood, Florida, as um, Leo Machida returns against UL Romero in the main event with Rick Story against uh, Eric Silva. Good fight with some good, uh, good card with some good fights on there, so keep your eye on that. Come follow me on Twitter, Will Martin 7 mma I'll say if you want to come and play a counter move with me, just let me know. And... Uh, like this video, comment, try and um, share it out there. I love to hear your picks for the fight as well. And let's see if um, maybe have a running competition between us and the viewers here. See how we get on. So I appreciate you um, watching the video. Take care. I'll be back later on the week for another video. And um, peace.